All right, I'm um, going to take a look at a couple of books that I'm going to guess people don't know about or just, you know, they're, they seem to be a little bit harder to find uh, in shops in general, in my opinion. Um, this is a collected edition of, there was a, I'll call it a maxi series. There was uh, four or five books, if I recall, and I, I do have the singles as well. Um, they were like these oversized square bound books for uh, Fofford Fof uh, and the Grey Mouser. <clears throat> um, I bought it because Mignola's art. Um, it is inked by Al Williamson, which gives it a little bit of a different look than what, uh, you know, Mignola would get inking himself. Um, so I'm a big fan of this one here. And then also, um, I have the hardcover edition of Iron Wolf, um, by Howard Chaikin and, uh, Mike Mignola. This is also, uh, scripted by Howard Chaikin. Um, yeah. Who, by the way, uh, I was at a, I was at a show and he kept harassing me about my hands. Uh, he'd always, he would grab me by the wrist and say, uh, you have, he kept saying I had Simonson hands. Apparently he said that Walt Simonson illustrates hands that look like mine, which is kind of weird because I always thought Simonson had a very uh, knobbish looking knuckle hand that he would illustrate. So anyways, nice guy though. So anyways, yeah, I'm just going to take a peek through these. Again, uh, I, I don't care about the story in these. I really don't. Th these are these are art books to me. So uh, I'll start with the uh, Fopper and Gray Mouser. Um, again, inked by Al Williamson, and I uh, got a cool little illustration here. This is an older edition. I, I don't recall when I bought. I bought this in '91, I think. So, anyways, uh, the colors are pretty cool. I do like the a, a little bit of a flat look on the colors. Um, like most most Mignola stuff looks better when it's not overly rendered. Man, that glare is crazy. Sorry. Um, so, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of work in here, too, that I realized later on going through it where absolutely uh, Travis Trey and what I'll call it, like his sweet spot uh, lifted from this book in particular, this collected book in particular, um, uh, I'm not going to point them out, but there are panels in like the, uh, I mean, well, I will point this one out right here. Uh, if you look at the Wildcat X-Men, the Wildcat X-Men book that he did, uh, you know, with the grayscale work, um, there are quite a few panels in here that were, uh, uh, lifted for some of the characters in there. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, obviously this, this book is highly influential to people that, um, like a little bit of that Mignola um, flair to their work. And, um, you know, this is back when Mike would actually detail stuff. A lot of cool dynamics with silhouettes, you know, um, very easy, legible pages. So uh, this is all pre the abstraction. You know, everything everything he does now to me look has an abstract look to it. Um, a lot of the rendering doesn't really make sense to my my eye holes. Um, yeah, but this stuff's gold. This stuff's all golden to me. Um, a lot of fun. Here's a. Uh, that looks very familiar. <laughs> this is. I said I wasn't gonna point it out, and here I am pointing out. Yeah, if you yeah in the Wildcat X Men book, this literally this panel was was swiped. Um, Drawn very well by Travis Trey, but absolutely lifted. Um, yeah, so again, you know, this, you know, Mignola's stuff's influenced hundreds, if not thousands, of artists uh, working professionally. And uh, you just take from the best, man, you know, like when you're drawing, you just, you kind of learn what, what you're attracted to and the things you want to be influenced by. And, things to swipe and things to integrate to your own work, you know, add to your, uh, add to your artillery, your arsenal of what you bring to the page. Yeah. And this stuff's fun. This stuff has a lot of that, that Hellboy kind of look where it has a very, like a one, like one light source, uh, that hits everything very heavily like this as well. 
Um, I think... I feel like this probably preceded the... Uh, Dracula miniseries that he did, based on the... Um, when the Dracula film came out with Gary Oldman, um, this has that kind of a look. I, if, I feel like there was a lot more work put into these pages, though. To be honest, a lot more, a lot more underdrawing, a lot more planning. But yeah, this stuff's all super easy to read. Um, very interesting. You know, he does a lot with very simple lines. Not a lot of line weight, but there's obviously a, there's a lot of fluid motion in his characters, even if they're just standing there. Um, you know, they feel somewhat animated. Um, to me, at least. So yeah, it's, again, it's just fun stuff to look at. <clears throat> uh, strange creatures. I like his creature stuff. Um, I've always liked the way he illustrates females too, but he doesn't really do that a whole lot. It seems to focus more on the male characters and the um, uh, creature effects and and a lot of these, you know, a, a lot of art. Like I learned how to do a lot of things with bricks of all things, based on what he would do with like uh, broken plaster. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that he would freehand in here. That any other artist, you would sit there with a ruler and try to get it right. And then when you see, you can kind of stylize it and it works. You can get away with it. Um, almost in like a, I don't want to compare him to this, but almost in like a Bill Watterson way, like like uh, the artist the Calvin and Hobbes. Um, sometimes freehanding it, it just looks nicer. It just looks cool because it, it just conforms and fits to the work. So... Um, and he does that a lot. Like a lot of these straight edge lines are not rulers. They're just him kind of freehanding them. And they just, they turn out nice. This, you know, contraption he's strapped into here as well. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, this is a pretty big collected book. Um, I think it has, I think this was it. No, this was not. This was the finale. Uh, they're fighting the dead pirates and stuff. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit more of a, creature feature feeling to that so snow women yeah not a whole lot of bonus stuff in here there's some reading material in the back but um this is the dark horse 20 year so the 20 year anniversary dark horse um collected edition of Fawford and the green mouser right there for you the binding is kind of funny so i feel like this book's going to start falling apart at me any moment this however is not this is the hardcover iron wolf uh, Chaikin, Mignola, and this one here is inked by uh, P. Craig Russell, who, um, oddly enough, for him to be inking Mignola is strange to me, because I feel like Mignola, Art Adams, uh, even early, I'll say Jim Lee, I feel like they, they took a lot from P. K. Ru uh, P. Craig Russell's uh, own artwork as far as like how to render things like energy and a lot of the tick line stuff. Um, and then they're all, they're, they all come from the school. Like uh, an artist today might come from the school of like, you know, uh, uh, Lee Liefeld McFarlane. And a lot of these artists in this time, you know, uh, late eighties, they would have taken from, you know, P. Craig Russell, Michael Golden, Walt Simonson, you know, not so much their uh, their peers, more so that that era or as John Byrne. So, but yeah, this is kind of this is a this is a book not a lot of people I seem to really know about. Um, it's been out of print for a bit. I don't know about the ownership with it. It might be an ownership issue. Why they they don't keep reissuing it. But um, the layout design in this book's really cool. It's sort of so this has kind of a steampunk feel to it. Um, I read through it once uh, years ago, and I don't recall it. I mean, it didn't make a it didn't really make a make a mark in my my lobe. So I'm just like uh, again, I just go back to it for the art, you know, for inspiration. Like I'll see like these these kind of panel layouts here are very cool. Um, they flow really well. I like a lot of the stuff that he does that's kind of cinematic, where it's obviously, you know, the thing happens, 
a little bit of dialogue and then it goes back to the aftermath of you know between these two here um i like that kind of storytelling approach i'm trying to do a little bit of that myself with the uh, red shawty war instead of just a b c d you know uh cool little balloon here eat shit and die that's that's completely shaken that sounds like a very shaken thing to say so i'm not really sure the undertones of this uh, very political book i don't know if um you know what his reference points were for like uh inspiration of this uprising of these people versus these um elites but it's drawn well lots of violence a lot of fire the kirby crackle stuff i love when mignola does this kind of stuff it just it looks very cool against uh his particular uh rendering style and he gets away with so much um very simply drawn shifts but it just works you know only mignola would be able to get away with this any other artist you'd have to render everything out and really sell it but um you know, he strategically has always had a a penchant for dropping um, dropping black shadows and, and using silhouettes to his advantage. Um, before it became a crutch, it kind of became a crutch, I, I feel like. But yeah, man, the, I mean, the inks on this are crazy; they're insane. Um, I know he uses a very simple line, but just seeing just seeing how well. P. Craig Russell like handles like in, like a panel like this. It's just so fun. It's so fun. Um, makes me feel like drawing drawing uh, you know minuscule characters like this. Like just because of how fun they look with the uh, simple lines. But yeah, and it, he has this insertion of like some simple tech, like like a little bit of tech mixed with steampunk, mixed with like Victorian era uh, clothing and all that. Um, again, with the bricks, <laughs> it's one of a Mignola uh, trope that I have absolutely stolen. I've made it my own. I love it. It makes drawing backgrounds fun, you know. And then these fadeaways, you know, where where. Uh, you know these lines don't connect and then here as well they don't connect um it's more it's almost like a gradient it's almost like using the brick as a gradient the way that someone might use hatching or cross hatching to uh blend into white um he's done that a lot with his background elements repeating patterns you know that's a that's a big thing that i noticed that manuel has done through the years um, and continues to do very well very well yeah these creatures are crazy looking i don't even know I don't even know, man. But it's fun to look at. Um, my only gripe with this book is so they introduce characters like this that are like very like vampiric, and they they feel a little out of place to me for some reason. Um, it might just be like it might just be the colors like a, like almost like um maybe everything should have been like like a more of a muted you know muted uh, palette maybe i'm not really sure yeah so yeah again this it's starting to feel a lot like uh the bram bram stoker dracula books that he had he had illustrated based on the film um yeah you get a werewolf fight here schluck schluck takes two of these heads off so awesome drawn so easily this see that's the thing too um mignola draws stuff that it feels like there's no effort behind it even though there is like like uh master draftsman right um was selling the story and uh can get away with very simple things to portray you know like a, a serious event and uh i know that's one that's one thing definitely i personally struggle with is trying to um you know sell us selling a scene and not overworking it i guess so i love this page right here this entire transition here where he's like changing 
and changing. Um, there could have been a little bit more with the transition stuff, but it just looks so damn cool. Yeah, now you got like these outer space elements. It's fifth element meets Dracula meets Van Helsing. I don't even know. Yeah, so yeah, color wise, I'm starting to see a pattern here. So it feels like they go from blue to red to brown to yellow. Heading back to blue. Those ones kind of threw me off. Back to blue. Teal. Orange. Back to blue. To green. To blue. So this we're going to call this the blue book. This will be the blue book. Because I'm noticing there's more blue than any other like uh, color for like the particular uh, palette. So this is the, the cool blue. This is a badass shot. I love this right here. Um... Yeah, so for color theory, this is definitely the, the blue the blue book for Manila. Um, but again, yeah, this is super cool. Um, if you're in a mic, um, grab the soft cover of this. Uh, this book here, I think, is, is probably expensive by now. But the soft cover has a different cover. Uh, Iron Wolf, I don't know of a sequel of it. I think this is the only one. Fires of the Revolution, um, scripted by Howard Shaken, uh, Manila art with p craig russell on inks and then uh, also highly recommend if you're wanting to delve into the world of uh, manuela's earlier works pre hellboy but super freaking awesome work uh farford and a gray mouser again scripted by chaken manuela with the al williamson 